you got that you got a little flower crown going on. Um, I he kind of stole my question. I wanted to know what it was like working with Robin and Justin Hoffman and stuff like that. But he took it. So first, I'll say I love you. But I think I love you too. Press that over there. Okay, and I also wanted to know what was it like? Because um, if I'm not mistaken, Hook was like one of your debut, you know, kind of things, right? Or no. what was like, it? Wasn't Hook like one of your debut, you know? Yeah, you know, I was always. Um, uh, you know, they, people say like I was discovered by Steven Spielberg, and that's true. I was 15 when I did that movie, but I actually started acting when I was 10, and I acted a lot before then. I was a very serious actor by 15, but it's great when you when you do a big movie like Hook with like Steven Spielberg and these kind of cats. It really it's a like a, a debut for you in Hollywood in a lot of ways, where you become you have a certain status in town, and it opens up a lot of doors. And, and of course, a character like that has burned, you know, in a lot of people's memories for years, so that's always, it's kind of cool. Everyone comes to Hollywood hoping you can do a character that someone or anyone will remember you for, so uh, I think is a very cool one, and then also being fortunate to kind of, years later, have a very cool character like Prince Zuko, another generation can appreciate in the same way, so I just, I'm pretty fortunate in that way. And I wanted to know, what was it like, you know, having to die on screen? That? It's weird, right? Yeah. I've never, because I've done a lot of acting before, but I've never had to die on screen, so right. I don't think I'd ever be able to do that without, like, cracking up or something. The first thing that's weird is, like, Hook is a kid's movie, and then you kill a kid yeah. in a kid's movie. <laughs> so weird, if you think about it later on. But I also think it's one of the um, things that makes that character so, so memorable, kind of, like, legendary in some way because he died. And, uh... I don't think I wasn't supposed to die. The, originally, I was gonna come back and get the sword and like take on the you know whatever the Lost Boys. But what happened was so many years ago, like people don't remember, but I mean I remember because I remember the time. Well, with, there was gonna be a Lost Boy series, right, on Fox or something like that, and so I didn't sign the contract. What happened is like the contract was really bad, so my manager didn't want me to sign the contract, and then they killed me. <laughs> Which is so weird, yeah. but um, but dying for the first time on screen, I actually went to uh, I knocked on the door of Dustin Hoffman, and I was and I asked him like you know because I look up to Dustin, he's a great actor, and I basically told Dustin, you know I've never died before, <laughs> uh, you know I never acted that same thing like you like how how do I do it right? And Dustin, he looked at me and he was like. Uh, he was one, he's one of you shooting the scene. I was like, well, like next Wednesday. He goes, I'll be there. And he ended up directing. He like and like my acting coach for the day. Oh wow! And just went through the whole thing with me. So it was pretty. It was a very very amazing amazing day. That's awesome. And I I've, I've heard some of your poetry on your Instagram and stuff like that. And it's awesome. Uh, thank you so I much. I wanted to mention that I did know that you know, like the poetry stuff. So yeah, my poetry side. Yeah, so that's cool. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Hey Dante. Yo, what's up? Um, first of all, big fan of your voice. Thank the you Super very much. Series, Jake Long. Really nice. Um, I had two questions. As far as the voice acting goes, when you're working on a series, do they give you the whole series like all at once and you have to learn all the lines or do they give you episode by episode and you go? Episode by episode. Yeah, so we, like me and the cast, we, we found out about, we fell in love with the whole Avatar project and learned everything by just reading the scripts from week to week. Like we come in like, yo, did you see what, did you read it? Did you see what happened? Like we were like, that's how involved we were reading it. So a lot of people, like I didn't even see the series as the cartoons till like years later after, we probably did the first series two years before it came out. So it's kind of weird. Like we, I lived the whole series, like the characters that you guys watch on the screen weren't the characters I grew up, I mean like I didn't come up with like, I learned the whole story by looking at Mae Whitman as Katara, Jack as Sokka, Mako as Uncle Iroh. So to me, a lot of it in my mind is still like those are the people that are the characters because we acted out all these scenes together in the vocal booth. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, one more question. If you're following the World Cup, who are your top picks for, to win it all? I'm rooting for U.S. all day long. No! Same here. I believe we will win. I believe that we will win. I, will, I mean, hopefully we get out of this round. Let's, let's get, get there. Let's get out of this round. But besides that, I'm going for Mexico. That was the right thing to say. Yeah, I'm not from LA, so that's, you know. 
when you're from LA or California, you're just everyone's honorary Mexican. That's part of it's part of the deal. Alright, thank you. Thanks. Hey, what's up? Yeah, what's up? Uh, you know in that episode where you're walking as Prince Zuko to you're walking with the Avatar and you meet Iroh again and you're begging him on your knees for forgiveness for right, betraying right, him? Right, 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 right. Okay. How did you get from walking real cool, talking, having some awesome conversation to getting on your knees and crying to your uncle? How do you change from just that scene to that next scene? I don't know. You know, I don't know. When you're acting, sometimes you just don't think. It's like you just... There's like a lot of people in the room, right? So you're acting with folks, and then you also have a director that's there directing you. And then you have the creators kind of giving notes all the time. So I, I really don't know. I try to not put my mind on it. The best time I always feel what I tell actors is like, if you're thinking too much about what you're doing in the scene, you're not really in the scene. Um, the best acting is when you're just kind of in it, talking to the person. If you're like over here thinking about making moves and all kinds of stuff, then you're probably not doing... You're probably not in the moment. You're not in the scene. Uh, that's the job of the director and the other people doing that stuff. Our job is to just be here and play the scene. And when we play the scene here, anything could happen. And anything could happen. You can go from being happy to sad and like in a blink of an eye, it could happen. Because my girl, that girl right there? Yes. She didn't know who Avatar was or what cartoon it was. Yeah. And in that scene, she saw you crying on your knees and she started crying. That's so. Good. So what I was saying is, like, have you ever cried when you were doing the voice acting? And um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, not cried, but I was definitely, uh, the, all the stuff with Uncle Iroh, especially because he passed away in yeah. the last season, and um, it was emotional for everybody. I mean, ironically, that he passed away, and then the next week is when he's in the, he's in the cell, and, uh, and I'm talking to... Yeah. to Uncle, I uh, Uncle Iroh and asking for forgiveness and stuff, but he doesn't say anything back. Like, in the script, he doesn't say anything back. But he's passed away. Like, so it was helped. the craziest thing. And then the next week, the actor that came in to replace him uh, was in a separate booth, and we started doing the scene, and then he starts speaking, and it sounds like, Mark it sound like dead on like Mako's voice, and uh, all of us were, like, pretty emotionally, like, wrecked, because it's just, uh, you know... Someone that you care deeply about and that you know just passed away is really, really, really hard on all of us. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. Hi. Oh. Hello. <laughs> it's okay. Be loud. It's okay. <laughs> um, I was just wondering if you could be a vendor, what element would you want to vendor? Fire, fire nation, always. <laughs> always. What, what? I mean, I'm a fire bender. Yeah. I'm a fire bender. <laughs> There's no other answer for me. What would you bend? Water. Fire. <laughs> Water. Fire, right? Water? Water. Okay, if so you're like Fire Nation, let me hear some noise. Fire Nation? Okay. Water? Air? Okay. Earth? All right, okay, I hear what you're saying. I represent the Fire Nation. For good or bad. Fire. I know, plus Jake. Jake yeah. Long's a dragon. Yeah, yeah. We're like Fire Nation all day long. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Water Tribe. How's it going, man? What's up, man? Uh, I just wanted to ask, you've done a lot of traditional acting and a lot of voice acting. So I just wanted to know, between those two, what would you say is your personal preference? Um, I'm just an actor, you know? I don't, I don't really have a preference either way. Whether whether it's a, a camera in the room or it's a microphone in the room recording me or a camera shooting me, it, I'm still trying to do the same thing. Uh, I'm not one of those voice actors that have all kinds of different voices. When you, when you notice when I'm, when I'm acting my voice, I'm just talking. It's just Dante talking. So really, I'm just an actor who happened to be with people who dug my voice. Um, so, you know, if I'm doing like Zuko stuff, I'm just trying to act them out as best as I can. So I don't really distinguish one way or the other. To me, it's all just good acting. People that want to be voice actors, I say that's great, um, but you need to learn to be a good actor. Like, don't try to distinguish the two differences. Bottom line, train and become a good actor. And how it comes out and how it's going to come out, but just strive to be a good actor. Okay. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you.
Hey Dante, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? What's your name? I'm Matthew. I'm actually the sound guy. You're the meth? Matthew. Oh, Matthew. I was like, yeah. damn. Because it looked like I do. You're like, I'm meth. I'm like, that's gangster. <laughs> actually, I'm, no, I'm, uh, I'm addicted to that stuff right there. Sugar Daddy. I know. I smelled some. I was like, I smelled funnel cakes or something up in here. It's incredible. Sugar Daddy? So, I'm down for that. What's up? Now, I'm, I'm going to go there very shortly. Anyways, well, I, they cut it off after me, so I'm the last one. But You're the last one, Man, I, I, I gotta ask this question. Um, I mean, I'm old school. I grew up with a hook. I'm old school, too. Yeah, so. What was it like to work with Julia Roberts in her prime? First and foremost, she was super hot. Yeah. Second, She's it was a little strange. Because she was, first of all, she was very nice to me, right? This is the thing. She was young and she's an ingenue and she was like super hot. And uh, and when I met her and I got to hang out with her on the set or in the makeup room, she was very sweet to me. But this is the this is the weird thing. Um, so at the beginning of the movie, when we started shooting, she was uh, she was dating uh, Kiefer Sutherland, right? And the first time I saw her, I was kind of scared of her because. So Kiefer's like bringing dogs onto the, to the Sony lot, which you can't bring dogs on. You get like two dogs. And the guard is like, sir, you can't bring dogs in the lot. And then Julia Roberts comes out like full on in Tinkerbell costume and yelling at the guard. I mean, she's young. And then she fires the guard. And she's saying like, I'm gonna fire, get you fired, something like that. And Kiefer Sutherland has the dogs like, uh. <laughs> and I'm like, my like, Dress room is not far, so I'm like watching this whole thing go down. And then so she leaves, and he leaves with the dogs. And then Justin Hoffman comes out in full-on Captain Hook costume, <laughs> tells the guard, like, you're not fired. Don't worry, you're not fired. So she was a little erratic because she's supposed to get married in the movie. And I think, like, like all these, like, invitations went out, but then she dumped them or something. Oh. So halfway through the movie... It's like Kiefer Sutherland's on the set, and then the second half of the movie, Jason Patrick's on the set. <laughs> it was like, whoa, this is weird. But, you know, she's a young actress. This is like a lot of years ago, I'm sure. She, I'm sure it was a hectic time in her life. But to me, she was super cool. And, of course, I'm just like a teenage boy like looking at a beautiful woman like Gaga over, yeah. you know, in the same room. But, yeah, she was cool. She was cool, man. Awesome. It's always great to meet, like... Like star, like star, like movie star, like especially like actresses. Yeah, because she's on a yeah a level that's. Because you're like, who movie. are you? That's crazy. And I don't know if they're like more sexy or hotter because they're famous. I'm not sure, but I think maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Certain cats like working, like working with Antonio Banderas, right? Like he's a superstar yeah. for sure. But when you talk to Antonio, like I'm talking to Antonio, right? He, he has this thing where he's talking to you and then everyone else disappears in the room. <laughs> like you have this feeling like no one else is here. <laughs> you know, like he's like looking at you, I'm like, damn, this guy's handsome. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think that's part of what makes the movie star. And he's single now. And he's saying, I know, which is sad because him and Melanie Griffin were so much in love, it was so crazy. But uh, I think that's the thing that a lot of stars have. They, they have that ability to make you feel like you're the only person in the room when they talk to you. Like right now? No. <laughs> it's just me and you, man. Meth, meth, it's just me and you, man. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your weekend. Come and say hi to me, or uh, let's go get a donut right now. Thank you, guys. All right, everyone, give it up.